The time for sowing squash seeds for the gardens is still months away. But as we continue to eat many different varieties of squash and pumpkins we have stored up from last year and watch some of them rot, I've been thinking about which varieties we will select to grow this coming season. We have a limited space for just a few of these very large plants in each of the family scale gardens, and I want to grow the same varieties in each of the gardens so that they are more comparable. As always, the yield or productivity of the different varieties in this maritime climate is a major factor to consider, and if the squash can store well over winter. But taste is also important, which of course is very subjective, and I'm interested in having different sizes and types for use in the kitchen. So considering all of that, which varieties of squash are we going to grow? For many years I have relied mainly on one hybrid variety of squash called Crown Prince, and have been quite pleased with how productive it can be and how good it tastes. But it does have its limits for use in the kitchen, and I began trying to grow some other varieties a few years ago, but haven't been so successful at finding another good option. So last year we grew a large trial of 29 different squash and pumpkin varieties, and it was really interesting to see such a diversity of possibilities. But it probably wasn't a fair trial, as the soil conditions were not great, and likely varied quite a bit over the large space that so many plants occupied. And we were only able to grow one plant of each variety, but we did get some useful information, with some of them producing really well and others very poorly. Many of the varieties didn't seem to ripen in the gardens very well, which can really affect the storability of the squash, and this is an important characteristic, but a few of them seem to continue to ripen quite a bit while being stored over the winter. It has been really interesting to taste so many varieties, some of which we really liked and others were less interesting or enjoyable, and I think that a lot of them simply were not ripe enough to taste as good as they could. With limited supplies from each variety, especially as they were shared between our two houses, we didn't have enough to put a few squash of each variety aside to see how long they would store for, but some of the varieties started to decay quite early. So I need to make a decision on what varieties to grow this year based on limited information, and there are still a few of the larger varieties that we haven't tried yet, as we've been waiting for them to ripen. Having relied mainly on a fairly large variety of squash for years, which produced fruit between 3 and 5 kilograms, I really appreciated being able to use smaller squash in the kitchen. It was also really nice to be able to enjoy different tastes and textures, especially with the acorn types of squash, which I really liked when I was a kid. None of the acorn varieties that we grew produced a very high yield last year, possibly because they need better growing conditions, but two of them seemed to ripen quite quickly and had beautifully patterned skin. I think I prefer the hybrid harlequin variety out of all the acorn varieties that we were able to try, as I really liked the flavour and the size made them convenient to prepare and cook. Unfortunately, because we liked them so much, we ate the few squash of this variety quite early in the season, so we didn't leave any to see how long they would store. But acorn squash generally have quite tough skin, and are known for being able to store for a long time, and I imagine it will be the same with this variety. The other large group of smaller squash types were the Japanese squash, which we grew nine different varieties of last year. It was more difficult with this set to select one based on taste, as quite a few of them we really enjoyed, but there were a few that were not so good, although I didn't keep careful records of all of this. We recently had a blue kiri squash, and we really liked it, possibly because it lasted long enough to have a chance to mature, but unfortunately the plant produced a fairly poor yield. The hybrid kabocha squash that we had rotted in December before we had a chance to try it, and one of the Yuchikikiri squash started to rot in storage in January, but this might be just an issue with the one fruit we had left. And others are still in good shape, including two orange Hokkaido squash, which also produced the biggest yield out of the set. So, based on this limited information, I would probably pick the orange Hokkaido variety to grow again, and I'd be tempted to include the blue Kiri because it tasted so good, but that's getting into too many varieties. There was another mixed set of smaller varieties, all from the Cucurbita pepo species of squash. We carved all the jack-o'-lanterns for Halloween, and are not so interested in the spaghetti squash, though it is a bit of a novelty, and the rondini were not productive enough to include in the list. 
The hybrid fairy variety is a possible option, but I think I'd really rather grow the delicata variety again, even though we had serious issues with the seeds. A few people had recommended this variety to me, and we ended up growing four delicata plants in the simple garden, beside the usual crown prince variety. And each of the four plants produced a different variation of squash, most likely because the original seed I bought had been cross-pollinated. Only one of them seemed to be close to what the delicata variety is described as, though I can't be sure it is true to the variety because I've never grown it before. But this squash was really good and produced quite a bit, though these plants were growing in better conditions than the other varieties in the trial. I would be really interested in growing this variety again, assuming I can get some seeds that were saved properly and not cross-pollinated. There was a set of six larger varieties of squash that we grew, which were all part of the Cucurbita maxima species. This group includes the Crown Prince variety, which I've relied on for years, and it produced one of the biggest yields in the whole trial, which was great to see. And this confirmed the original recommendations that I had heard about this being one of the best varieties to grow in this climate. I still want to grow this reliable Crown Prince variety, but I'm unlikely to include any of the other large varieties in this set, as I don't think that any of them were really appropriate for this climate. The Hungarian Blue seemed similar to the Crown Prince, but the one squash we had rotted before ripening, and this was the same with the Rouge Vif de Tempe and the Turks Turban varieties. The Helle Centenar was way too big, and perhaps only really useful for processing or impressing friends but it also rotted in December before we got around to using it. All of these varieties seem to need a warmer climate. And the one remaining fruit of the Marina Diciosia variety was ripening into a nice color, but I just noticed that it was starting to develop a soft spot on one side. So I will salvage what I can from this squash and try it, but it won't replace the Crown Prince variety as it just wasn't as productive. Most of the cucurbita moschata species of squash didn't produce well, including the two butternut types of squash, which was really disappointing as I was hoping to find a butternut variety that produces well here in Ireland. The futsu black variety was similar. It might grow well in another context, but apparently not here. But the muscade de Provence variety did produce three very large fruit. This was one of the first varieties that I tried when I first started growing vegetables here in Ireland years ago, and I really liked it, which helped inspire me to continue to grow vegetables. So this variety has some sentimental value for me, and I was really pleased to be able to grow it again after all these years, and that it produced a heavy crop of large squash. The skin was originally a dark green, rather than the usual ochre color the squash apparently turns into when it's ripe, which was disappointing. But someone suggested that I wait and let it continue to ripen in the warmth of the house, and three months later it is finally beginning to turn that characteristic color, so it might be almost ready to cut open after a long wait. It would be nice to grow this again, but it's really too big for our context, at least to include in the planting plans for squash for the family scale gardens. In three of the family scale gardens, we really only have space for three plants in each garden, and I think I would grow one plant each of the hybrid Crown Prince and Harlequin varieties, and the open pollinated Orange Hokkaido variety. I think this is a good selection of different types of squash that produce a reasonable amount for their type, and they all taste good, and I can probably rely on the seed quality. In the plans for the polyculture garden, there is space for four plants. And in addition to these three, I would probably add one plant from the open pollinated delicata variety, assuming that I can get better seed that are true to the variety. In the simple garden, we have space for eight plants. So we can grow two of each of these four varieties. So three of the varieties would grow in all five gardens with the additional delicata variety growing in just two of the gardens. I think this is a decent balance between growing a diversity of varieties and having some consistency between the different gardens so that we can compare how the same plants grow in different conditions. And I would expect a really good yield from these 21 plants, but probably less than we've been able to harvest in the past from the same space when we grew just the one really productive Crown Prince variety. This is a compromise with trying to get a more diverse crop, but we won't be short on squash, as I also want to grow squash in some of the other spaces. There is a space beside the older polytunnel that I could use to grow another variety trial this year, but I think it might be more interesting to use it for another type of trial. 
One of the Delicata cross-pollinated plants produced a crop of smaller green fruit that eventually started to turn orange in storage, and I wasn't originally impressed with the yield. But we really liked the flavor of the squash from this one plant, and I started saving seeds from a few of them as we ate them, as I was thinking it would be interesting to see if the next generation would be the same. I suspect the seeds in each of the fruits was likely cross-pollinated again, so there might not be any plants in the next generation producing similar to what this one plant produced. But I wonder what would happen if I grew a few plants from each of the squash that I saved seeds from. It would at least be an interesting exploration into the effects of cross-pollination. And it could also be interesting to hand pollinate some flowers with the same plant or to back cross them with the original Delicata variety with the possibility of eventually developing a new stable variety. This would be interesting, but it would take up a lot of space that might be better used for other crops. And it would also take quite a few years and some skills and knowledge about plant breeding that I don't currently have. And I recently noticed that the squash from this plant don't seem to be storing very well, and the flavor is changing in a way that we don't like as much. So perhaps it's not worth trying to experiment with this accidental cross anymore, but I have a few months to decide. Even if I don't explore a bit of plant breeding and use that extra space for other crops or explorations, I still want to grow a few other squash varieties. And with so much work to do this year and so many other crops to manage in the newly established growing spaces, I've decided to lighten the workload in other areas, especially in the older, smaller polytunnel. Instead of filling this protected growing space with the usual wide range of crops, including tomatoes, peppers, beans, and cucumbers, which we also grow in the other polytunnels, I'm planning to fill this space with squash plants this summer. There is enough space to try a lot of the same varieties again, and possibly add a few more, to see how they all produce in the sheltered conditions of the polytunnel. And I am probably going to add into the mix some maize or sweet corn and climbing beans for producing dried seed to explore a version of the Three Sisters, but a protected cropping one in order to be successful in this climate. This would be really interesting to try, and a lot less work than the usual crops we grow in this polytunnel, especially at the busier times of the year. So in the end, we won't be limited to the selections that I made for the other gardens, and I still get to learn a lot about the different varieties of squash, and we will hopefully get a bigger range of properly mature squash to try. I just need to decide if I want to add plant breeding into the tasks that we take on and the skills that I need to develop this year and in the next few years.